All right, we promised you Kurt Heelan from NBC Sports would be joining us. You can follow him on Twitter at Basketball Talk. And Kurt lives there in Southern California, so he's been uh, a part of what's been going on, unfortunately, uh, in the basketball world because everybody is hurting. And uh, Kurt, as a uh, guy that uh, has been in that area a long, long time, I would imagine it's been like a, a giant morgue or, or a giant funeral home, let's put it that way, uh, in uh, in Southern California right now with everybody hurting. Yeah, it, it's definitely been somewhere between a wake and a funeral. I mean, it, the shock the shock was lasted a day or so. I mean, just and I, I think this wasn't just in Los Angeles. I mean, this was so random and so out of the blue and just so. Kobe was a guy who t- so controlled everything in his life, um, including you know like hey. Sure, I ruptured an Achilles at 34. I'm not letting that define how I leave the leave the league. I'm going to leave on my own terms as long as that took. That made this, you know, just him not. This was something obviously out of his control, and that just made the whole thing feel a little more shocking. So it's been a little stunning, and then the sadness has creeped in around uh, as that has faded around here in Southern California. And uh, yeah, there's just still a lot of people in shock, and still a lot of people just kind of stunned. And there was, you know. There's a huge memorial across from Staples that'll probably be there for a while because the Lakers now, uh, you know, aren't going to play until Friday. So. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right, and uh, and it would have been a, a crazy night tonight if they would have held yeah. that game. And uh, I think they did the right thing in uh, postponing this game because it's yeah. just too soon uh, for everybody. Although, I, I, in, in a twisted way, can you imagine if Donald Sterling was still around owning that team? He might have still. He might have made it. Difficult <laughs> on the league and the Lakers, even in that situation. You know that? Yeah, maybe. I mean, he actually had a really good. Weirdly, he had a good relationship with the Lakers. As, um, you got to remember, he actually loaned Jerry Buss the money back in the day to, to originally help buy the team. Like Jerry, he was a real estate guy, but his money was tied up and stuff. And Donald Sterling uh, helped helped him with a loan to originally buy the team. Um, but that said, yeah, you never know what would have happened. I think it was the right thing because when you, it's not just the Laker players, and they're almost in some ways way more transient than the rest of the Laker organization, which is very family run by the boss, boss family. And Kobe was part of that family for 20 years. And it's not just the players or the coaches and the trainers, it's the whole business side and the, you know, the people, um, you know, <laughs> in ticket sales and marketing, but, and who have dealt with Kobe and got to know Kobe over the years. Cause he helped with so much stuff, not to mention the, you know, the depth of the front office and everything on the basketball side. So it really shaken them as an organization. And it's just as people, because they, they really lost a close, uh, somebody they viewed as a close friend. So it, it's, I don't know that they were ready to put on a game beyond just playing. Like, I'm not sure how the organization was going to go, through the motions of putting on a game yet. They just, they, I don't think they were ready. You know, they went, when yesterday they, they, they announced that. And then when I heard people elaborating a little bit more on it, I never thought about this. Yeah. That the people in that organization, a lot of them from whatever, from people that work in the arena to trainers, yep. all that, there were people that were tied to Kobe for 10, 15, 20 years. And so they knew him for a long, so there's, there's, emotionally there's actually people in that building that are they're 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 truly hurting right now way more than any of us because they literally had that physical connection with that guy and i think this was the right thing of giving that organization a real amount of time to grieve we understand that everything else needs to move forward but you got to give them some time to kind of you know recover from all of this exactly and i think you know that the, the schedule shook out well for them. They don't play until, you know, there, there was only one game this week because they've been on the road so much. They, they've they had the, the big showcase game that they canceled tonight. But after that, you know, they, again, they don't play till Friday. So that gave them a little bit of a break. And, um, you know, they'll be moving on then. And it'll be interesting to see how they handle Friday night and the tributes and, and what they end up doing as an organization. Uh, they've got a couple days to think about it and plan it out uh, now. So that's, it's going to be interesting to see, and it's going to be you know an, an emotional game against a Portland team that I'd say Portland would be right up there. Portland or Utah, like, as the organization Clippers uh, that uh, Kobe most tortured 
over the years with just big games and, and big moments. Kurt Heelan, of course, from NBC Sports joining us. You can follow him on Twitter at Basketball Talk. Kurt, the other thing that I was talking about, and I know they're going to end up inducting Kobe uh, with, oh, yeah. with uh, Garnett and, uh, D- and Duncan into the Hall of Fame, which is obviously a, a no-brainer. And, and to me, it doesn't matter who ends up having the honor of inducting him. Whoever you choose is fine. But that day is going to be so twisted because we're only going to be a few months still removed from him, you know, obviously uh, from losing him. I can't imagine what Vanessa is going to be going through that day because while we're we're celebrating him and all that stuff and his yeah. career and all that, that woman is only going to be thinking that she lost her husband and her daughter, two of the, yeah. two of the more important people in her life. And I, I, I don't know how that woman even handles that day only a few months removed from losing both of them. You know, it, it's going to be so weird, the state of mind that most of us are going to be in and the one that she's going to be in because she's going to be in some personal hell that I don't know how yeah. she handles it and how she stays stoic for her kids too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if she can stay stoic for her kids. And it's, I was wondering that uh, briefly when I was, you know, writing yesterday, just that, that you know, about Kobe still being on track for the hall. Like this was going to happen no matter what this year. But it makes the day strange because, I mean, yes, people get put posthumously into the Hall of Fame, but it's usually many years removed, right? Like it's not they, the that the the person just passed away. It's usually uh, there's there's some period of time there. This is going to be much more fresh, and it's going to be. I'm curious again. This would be interesting for a discussion with the Hall about how you handle this. With their, they have a you know a standard format, and a standard ceremony where one guy comes up after the other after the other. But does this take away from Duncan and uh, yeah. Garnett's day? Is there a way to separate that out? And by the way, Chris Bosh should be in that group. He is eligible this year. To me, he's a, he's a, a lock Hall of Famer. We'll see if the, we'll, we'll see if the voters put him in. But um, like I and, and whoever else ends up on the list that year, I don't. I mean, do you almost do a separate thing for Kobe on a different night just so that it doesn't bleed into um, what should be a celebration of life for, for these other people as well? So I'm, I, it's, I'm not sure. I'm not even, you know, they've got time to figure that out, but I'm just not point. sure. I'm not sure how you handle that. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic point. What did you think of the league playing the games? Did you think they should have canceled it? Uh, that same day, I know it was kind of short notice, yeah. and everybody that had traveled had already traveled. So it, I, I know that the league was put in a in a difficult situation. But you know, I go back and think about you know Pete Rozell, how he took a lot of heat for playing the games after JFK got shot, and and he continued, and and they moved on. So I think we will move on the same way. But your thoughts on that one? I wonder if they'd had more time. You know, that day there was one. It was Sunday, obviously. There was a an early start game. There, all, there almost always is an early start game on Sunday, so we, so Europe can watch. The Utah, you know, the something Utah in prime game, time. right? The Utah game, right, right? Yeah. And so there's always one that's just there to to appease the European audience. Um, and Utah's on there for because you know they've they've got not only Bogdanovich but Rudy Gobert, and and so. Um, they're kind of a big draw in France and parts. So they're on those a fair amount. If, if there had been only night games, I wonder if it'd been different if they'd had time to, but by the time this, they were even thinking about it, players were warming up. The arena was open. Like it was, it would have been very difficult to call off that game. But I wonder if they'd, I wonder if it'd been different if they'd had till that night. But the other part of that is that it's, it's a bear to move games around like that and i know baseball deals with it a little bit but in you know they can play a double header you can't really right. do that in the yeah, NBA. you're, you're in and a city dealing... for multiple ta- multiple days it's different you can right. do that and and you've also just got in the nba all the and all these arenas are double booked or triple booked i mean you know, in the case of staples like you know they're going to move this laker clipper game it looks like it's going to be i think they're looking at april 10th or something like that because lakers and clippers are traveling concerts come in there and the, don't forget the LA Kings play out of that building. <laughs> they're actually they're actually the primary tenant. They are the, they are the people who built the thing. Their ownership group. So, um, it's it's just tough to find dates. Like it, it's one thing to do it with one game. It'd be something else to do it with you know five or six games. That would have been uh, 
it would have been a real challenge. Plus, uh, the obvious thing is, just say here, by the way, you know Kobe would have said play, right? <laughs> like, you know, he would have been like, what are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Kobe would have felt better that you're playing in his honor instead of yeah. not playing in his honor. Right. Yeah, no. Exactly. Yeah, he, he, wanted to, he wants to see what Trey Young did. You know, how Trey was just super inspired uh, the other night. Yeah. And he, he lit it up, absolutely. And so, yeah, that's what I well, think. Somebody, there's been some real inspired performances. Buddy Heald dropped 42 last night. Uh, a, a guy who would... That, that generation, um, Heald's a little older, but um, there's a lot of um, the guys who are in the league now who are in, you know, m- mid-20s or younger... Kobe was there, there Jordan, in a sense. Like when they were right. growing up, when they were in their teens and or you know, and formative years, and they were really following that, not only playing, but really following basketball and watching all these games. Kobe was the biggest guy on the planet, right? And and he was LeBron starting to take over that mantle, but you know, Kobe had taken it for a while. And there's just a ton of it's not just the guys like LeBron or even going back, you know, Shaq, and you saw how Shaq and Charles have reacted. And stuff like the guys who have a relationship and played with Kobe. It's Trey Young. A lot of these guys turn to Kobe as a mentor. Uh, Luka Doncic worked out with him a couple summers. Like all these guys grew up kind of idolizing Kobe, and uh, it, it hit them in a different way. Well, Eric Gordon had fifty points last night, right? Yep. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so somebody had somebody had to step up on that team. That was that was the yeah, upset right. of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, Harden didn't play last night. Uh, well, Harden or Westbrook. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right. Uh, Kurt Heelan, of course, from uh, NBC Sports. You can follow him on Twitter at Basketball Talk. Uh, the Heat. Uh, my brother, where where are you at now? We're, we're, we're across the halfway mark. Real or Memorex? Uh, well, what is the ceiling in your eyes for the Miami Heat? I think conference finals isn't out of the question. Uh, second round, I think, is is a reasonable expectation right now, which, by the way, would be a huge, a, 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 or a much bigger step than I think a lot of us thought they would take this year, you know, before the season. Amen. Um, to, to me, in the East right now, the Bucks are the Bucks, right? Like, the Bucks are yes. clearly the best team, may, arguably the best team in the NBA, but clearly the best team in the East. Um going away and everybody's going to have to play catch up with them. I thought Philly would be there. They've got obviously some offensive issues and, and you know, Joel and beats out right now, but um, they've got issues to figure out. I think Miami at least knows who it is. It's been playing. It's like, I keep thinking they need another player and they don't really have a good way to get one. If I, a, they don't really have a great way to get one at the deadline more than that. This is not much like, I don't, I don't know that you want to make a huge sacrifice for the guys available at this trade deadline. So, you know, um, I don't know, but I think that like between Miami and Boston and maybe Philly, it kind of go any way. We'll see who's healthy at the end of the year, who's playing well. But uh, second rounder and be and maybe beyond is is a reasonable goal for them right now. Who's the coach of the year? I had Spolster at the midpoint. Um, I, I, to me, it's Spolster and Nick Nurse. I guess I left Toronto off that list, and I shouldn't. They um, they, they they remain the defending champions who keep surprising everybody. Um, to me, Spolster's one, and Nick Nurse is like right on his heels. And then you get into um, there's a lot of coach of the year can sometimes be one of the toughest ones. Just a, hey, it's 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 a little difficult to judge coaching from the outside purely. I mean, you know, you can talk to scouts about X's and O's and whatever, but you know, the job of an NBA coach is so much more than that um, in terms of managing players and minutes and egos and and motivation and stuff and. Uh, uh, it can be tough from the outside to say that. I think Papa, you know, who's who'd be in the list, by the way? Who? Spurs, but please, Popovich. Well, yeah. Coach. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, they started, they started slow, and then they've gotten better, at, yeah, well, they, which, they found, which is typical of Pops, that he figures yeah, things exactly. out and figures where guys belong, and then, then all of a sudden, yeah, it's... Yeah, so they're in there. There's some other guys. Even frankly, even you know, my list. I had like eight guys on my list that uh, that I was been watching and thinking about for the award. And uh, you know, like even Frank Vogel's on there because he's done a better. Like the Lakers have been better than I expected. He's getting more out of his role players than I expected. I mean, it's it's not just that they get. You know, Dwight Howard came on the redemption tour, but he's using him really wisely. So it's going to be um, and, and and other guys on that roster as well. So I, to me, it's Spolster right now, but it's. Boy, that's a wide open race. That's a that's a that's a it's a really much like the league this year. It feels a lot more wide open. That race in particular is 
I, I think honestly, the only end of the year award I feel like somebody's running away with it is rookie of the year. After that, there's a there's there's battles for everything. Kurt, I, I'm I'm a, of the school that I don't think that the Heat really have a lot of trade pieces unless they're going to end up shipping some of their young guys, which I don't think that makes any sense no. whatsoever because they're also very cap friendly, which is a beautiful thing in this league. So Dion Waiters is the guy that you would try to trade, but he doesn't look like he's tradable yet. And and Justice Winslow is a sack of injuries. So yeah. can Miami make a move? Or do you hear anything before the trade deadline? Can the Heat I, be players? I, they can. They will be involved in stuff. I mean, first off, they always are, right? I mean, between yeah. Andy and, and Pat Riley, I mean, they, they're one of those teams that is always kicking the tires and looking to be aggressive. Um, I just not, like you said, I'm not sure with the players they've got. That they've got some. It might be a summer move, but I'm not sure that they can do it right now. But the kind, you know, if you're going to put one more elite player next to, you know, and Bam's kind of evolved and become the third, you know, a, a potential top three kind of guy on a really great team and, and should be an all-star, by the way, hopefully he makes it. Um, I'm not sure that the guy you need is out there. And it's, it's a weird trade deadline night now, Big O, because let's, let's use the Pelicans as an example. They, they, you know, were looking like sellers, right? And they're like, yeah, well, listen, I was in before Christmas and I was at the G League showcase. I heard Drew Holiday's name a lot and, Derek favors and stuff that, you know, Hey, they could help this team and they could make these moves. Then they win a few games, like 11 out of 15 or something. And then they get Zion back and suddenly they and Sacramento and, and San Antonio and some of the teams everybody thought would be sellers are like, Hey, we got to decide. Do we want to go for the eight seed? Do we want to do this? I mean, they've only only got a week. Um, but, and so some of them might wait through this weekend and before they really make a push, but you're going to get a late deadline push of who's going to be sellers. And even with all that, I'm just not sure, like I said, for the price they'd have to pay, who Miami gets that really moves the needle for them, right? Like, they could fill in some gaps and they might be able to help themselves out on the buyout market or something afterwards. But, I mean, I, look, I love Andre Iguodala. How much do you want to give up a first for Andre Iguodala at this point? Does he really move oh. the needle? Oh. For somebody like them, I don't know if he does. Well, I don't Miami, know if he moves it well, enough. Miami doesn't have a first rounder for seventy-seven years, so that's not that's really true. Weird. That's that too. That's, that's true. I, yeah, I, they, I think I, I think the the Grizzlies ultimately will come off first and take a take a high second from somebody. You know, uh, it's become strange. Like first to first, but the, what really has become coveted around the league are top ten, top twelve second round picks because you can get. Once you get past about 20, it depends on the draft, but let's use a round number. Once you get past player about number 20, 20 to 40 is a pretty, who do you like better, like not real hard distinction type of area. And if I can get a guy at 31 and I don't have to give him a, a, a guaranteed contract or I can get him a lot cheaper than the guaranteed money I have to give him in the first round, like everybody wants those. I think so. I think eventually, though, for what Iguodala can bring someone – Someone will give the Grizzlies one of those. That's, uh, I mean, I got to tell you. All right, so what's it going to take for waiters to become tradable? And I, I know that there's no way they trade him now because he's had all those issues. Yeah. So what does he have to do to become, I guess, sexy by either this offseason or, I guess, the trade deadline next year? He becomes an expiring contract, so that becomes sexy no yeah. matter what. But it, right. what, what does he need to become, or what do the Heat need from him so they can trade him in the offseason? Well, I think it's two things. A, play a little bit to show that, yeah, he can still play, which he kind of did the other night. He let you look pretty good in the game he got in and you know, sh show that there's still something in the tank, which I think most people believe he has. But the other part of that is just not be disruptive, not be, a, you know, and, and Miami's a, it's a unique culture and it's a little more strict than some other organizations and other organizations may be a little more open to it and, and give him a little more leeway, but you've got to prove that you're not really going to be disruptive in the organization um, and disruptive to look, you're coming in to play a role at this point in Dion waiter. And well, frankly through all of the waiters career, but especially now you're playing a role. And if I think you're going to upset the apple cart, then it's not worth it. I can get somebody else. So he's got to prove. Um, and that's, that's going to take some work by his agent. That's going to take a work by a lot of people, um, not just the Heat. Um, that's that's a little more on Dion to prove that, hey, if you bring me in, 
I'm I'm not going to be I'm not, I'm not going to be a problem, and that, that's nobody wants to bring that into their culture. Frankly, I mean that's that's more than just a basketball thing. That's a that's a life thing. Nobody really is looking to bring in the disruptive force, except for you know the girls I dated in my twenties. Follow him uh, on Twitter at <laughs> Basketball Talk. Follow his work there at NBC Sports. Kurt, what are you guys working at so they can uh, check you out there at NBC Sports? Uh, obviously, we'll still have a lot of Kobe stuff, and we're starting to get back into uh, the groove of everything else uh, with around the league power rankings coming out tomorrow and all that. But, uh, look, we're, we've got a lot of Kobe stuff. We'll continue to have a lot of Kobe stuff following both, uh, both uh, you know, tributes to Kobe and all of that and, and what the league ends up doing, but also uh, and through the All-Star Game, which will another place it'll be interesting to see what kind of tributes they do. Um, but also the investigation into what exactly happened and, and how, how this accident happened, which is kind of, a, I don't know enough about it, but it's it, in terms of like, I'm not a pilot, but it's kind of an interesting, how did this happen scenario. Good stuff as always. Kurt, you are the best, my brother. Thank you for taking some time, man. Take care. You got it, baby. Thank you. Kurt, as always, man, good people, always getting it done uh, on the program. By the way, uh, Bill, we are at nine ninety nine as subscribers for YouTube. Our next subscriber is going to be number 1,000. Thank How you. That? How about that? Got to it pretty quick, man. Uh, that's pretty cool on your part out there. Let me see if I have an account that yes. I could just use. <laughs> Uh, uh, one guy says 72 Finns logo says I need that Herbert moving up in the draft chart because of the senior bowl performance and Greer likes that big arm tall pocket passers. Don't be surprised if they draft him in my humble opinion. I would not be shocked if they draft him. I would not just like anybody else because of he's intoxicating, man. He's got all that talent. So I would not be surprised if somehow or another somebody reaches in, we hit 1,000. We hit 1,000. Nice job by you all out there. Way to go. Love it. There you go. I like it. And no, I do not have an available account to subscribe. I already have. Okay. Well, hey, man, somebody uh, somebody signed up right now and, uh, you know and what? became number 1,000. Truly, truly, thank you, guys. Yes. That enables us to do so much more there. Yeah. Yep. Now we got to build it up. Now, now next, the, believe it or not, the next stage is ten thousand. But that's all right. That's that's down the line. Only ten thousand. Uh, only ten thousand. That's the next one. But this one we needed. We needed to get to one. So now we can, uh, you know, do our thing. I wonder if they let you do it like right away. That's cool. I like it. I like it. All right. Good stuff, man. I, I appreciate all of you out there. Uh, I can't say enough on the support that you guys have given us uh, already here on the show. It's uh, It's been absolutely amazing, the, the amount of downloads and the way it goes up, too. Every single, uh, every single month, it, it's gone up. So NorCal says, congratulations, O. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks to you, NorCal, and everybody else that uh Yeah, that NorCal big and, part. Yes, everybody. You know, NorCal obviously a huge part of the show, but uh everybody is a part of the show. That's it. See that's what I've been trying to get to all of you out there. That what they do in normal radio, you're not really a part of it. They don't really care about you. That's not how I am. So that's kind of what we want to build is something different that we kind of build it together, that it's really your show, you know, that kind of deal. That's what we're trying to do here. You know, that's uh, that's the way it goes. All right, let's uh, take a quick break. Uh, let me tell you about Toyota of Hollywood. We were just there on Sunday. We're going to be there in two more days at Toyota of Hollywood because we're there every Thursday. We only missed this past Thursday because we were at the Senior Bowl. But we're back every Thursday at Toyota of Hollywood. And, of course... Come on out, 1841 North State Road 7, just a couple blocks south of that big, beautiful guitar off the turnpike. Number one volume Toyota dealership in the southeast United States, over 400,000 square feet. They have over 1,500 cars and trucks in stock. Great deals going on right now. How about this? 2019 models. 
The Toyota Yaris L four door, not seventeen thousand man. Eleven seven seven five. These pre owned vehicles are in amazing shape. Get on down there, check it out for yourself. Zero percent financing for seventy two months. They'll make your payments till twenty twenty one. They've got so many different programs to take advantage of. Mention our name. Mention Big O. They will take care of you at Toyota of Hollywood. We're back. CBD flower. You can get it here at VSS West Pines. You see that CBD flower? Huh? How's that CBD flower? kind of looks like real flower, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. It's called Fly High Hemp. But you're really not flying high again like Ozzy Osbourne would say. Okay? You're just going to feel good. But there you go. If you want to get your CBD hemp, and maybe you can enjoy it in an R2-D2 or a Pax, okay? These are the dry herb vaporizers. And you can enjoy your CBD flower here at VSS West Pines. Make sure you tell them that we sent you, okay? YouTube's there we go. okay, right? Huh? YouTube's okay? YouTube YouTube looks fine to me, doesn't it? I don't know why. Why would you ask? Because you were pointing at it. Oh, because I was showing you how the stuff looked on the camera. <laughs> the only time so, you point something out to me, something's wrong. Oh, yeah, well, that's true. That's true. That is very true. There you go. This is the R2-D2 um, pipe that you can enjoy here. This thing's really cool, actually. You got to admit, this R2-D2 I mean, if you're a Star Wars fan, you whip that out on somebody, they're going to go, this is badass. And for you ladies, if you're a Star Wars fan, you want Mrs. R2-D2, you see? That way, you know, you go a little girly. Right there, we're taking care of you in every way possible here at uh, VSS West Pines. There you go. And by the way, if you want to be a proud sponsor of our program and you want our show to come to you, we can do that also here at VSS West Pines. So have some fun. Come on out here and uh, and get your CBD products. They've got them for you at VSS West Pines. Edward says, they might go Herbert, but I would rather them go get an OT or edge rusher then look second tier QB and double down. Well, that's what kind of what we just talked about a little bit. Uh, 72 Finns logo says, I know you care about us, Big O. I've been following your broadcast for about 20 years. Well, thank you, 72 Finns logo. I I'm listen, man, I'm one of the weirdos on air. I actually become friends with listeners. Okay. And that and plenty of you know what I'm talking about because we get to know each other. You come to our places where we're broadcasting. I become friends with our sponsors. Things I do you realize that in radio, okay, there are a lot of guys and women that are just doing their shows. And then the salesperson comes in and says, Hey, I got a new sponsor for you, and they give them a script. And then the the host reads the script every day, never meets the sponsor. Never knows the sponsor, never knows the sponsor's products. They just talk about it on the air on that script, and they read the same script every day, and they really don't know anything about the sponsor of the product. That's not who I am. I don't do that because I'm actually not going to have a sponsor that I don't believe in or that I, don't, that I know or things like that, you know? So appreciate you all out there in a big-time way. Thank you so much. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, uh, I could see that as well. Not high on Tua with all the injuries besides the hip. This is why sports talk will evolve. Interaction between the show and listeners. This show is going to blow up. Well, let's hope so. Uh, you guys are doing a great job with the downloads. Our downloads are increasing every month by about 25 to 30 plus percent. It's been like the last two months, it's been like around 33% the increase. So basically a third, we're, we're adding a third of a new audience every single month on uh, on the show. And we're doing it again this month, which is truly amazing to have these kind of numbers. So, 
There you go. Ron Adams says, it was $9.99 when I hit subscribe. I hope I was $1,000. I, I don't know. Can I look at it and, and find out who was number 1,000? I don't know if I can do that. Uh, let's see. When you, when, when you get to 1,000, a bunch of bells and whistles open up. So we may be able to find out that okay. information. All it's right. possible, you know. Okay. There you go. I don't, I don't know if we can, but uh, we'll see. All right. And, and I, now I don't know. And, and after 1,000, I, it just says 1K on it now. So I have no idea where we're, what's – I guess we won't know when 1. we get – 1.5K. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, all that. It'll probably be the next chime. Like we, yeah, it may be. It It'd might be, be nice if they did it by a tenth. You know, we got 1.1. 1. 1, yeah, I, I don't know if it – I don't know if how, how they do that. Um. 72 fins low. Big O, are you going to Vegas for the draft? Dude, do you watch this show every day? <laughs> are you sure about that? Seriously? Like, you have not caught us? Like, we're hosting for three days at Tommy Rockers the entire draft? Like, we're going to be there from the 20th to the 27th? We're going to be actually out in the West Coast even earlier than that because we're going to go see... Baked and it hasn't come out of the fog I yet. Gu- I guess so, man. I guess 72 Fins logo. Wake and bake. 72 Fins logo. Are you flying high? What's wrong took, with you? He took NorCal's suggestion and he has yeah. is oblivious. Yes. Yes. This is pretty good looking stuff, isn't it? I got to tell you. Looks good. So come on out here. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Doesn't it? Looks really good. I got to tell you, man. Uh, Big O, I will join in on the praise on your 1K day. Thank you, and Bill. Thank you, Dougie Fresh. Thank you, man. Uh, 72 Fins logo says, yes, I do, but things can change. Come on, 72 Fins logo. You better get your ass out there to Vegas. We've been talking about Vegas now for a couple of months, man. We're the only show in South Florida that's going to be rocking there for three days. Nobody else is going to. No, no, the cheap-ass radio stations that they have in town now, they, they can't even afford to go to to uh, Las Vegas for the draft. They're not going to have their draft shows out there for three days. Well, first of all, the cheap-ass stations in town, I know because I worked for the cheap-ass station in town, okay? You know what they would tell? Well, we're only doing the first day. That's all. That's it. I didn't have to do back at least when we when we were run by Joe Bell. That was the last time that we were still a real radio station. Um, Joe Bell had me do all three days because Joe had the same passion I did about covering sports, like actually covering sports. First of all, you've got to get shows that actually really can talk sports. That's the other thing, my friends. You're not getting every single day anymore. So that's that's a whole different ball game. All right? So, yes. Yes, 72 Fins logo. We are going to be in Vegas. We're going to be there for a whole week having fun. Those stations don't even pay people to go to West Palm. Yeah. Let alone go to Vegas. Vegas, baby. Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Ah, the the, the uh, dispensaries in Vegas are open twenty four hours. You move on up. That's right. <laughs> so come on out here, hey man. We're out here at VSS West Pines one two three nine seven Pembroke Road. Come on out here, man. 72 Finns logo says, I'm going to Vegas. Brian, uh, Brian Fart, Big O, yes, you've been talking about it. There you go. Zach Wiley says, way to support the locals, Big O. Hey, man, we're, we're, we are local. That's the other thing. How many people on radio here locally are actually born in this town and raised in this town? Very few. Yours truly, baby. Born in Palm Beach County. Raised in Little Havana. How weird is that? 
<laughs> You're born in Belle Glade, and then you are raised in Little Havana and Hialeah. Kind of a, a little bit of a, a little bit of both. All right, 786-322-1105. That's 786-322-1105. If you want to get in on the program, you can also reach out to us on Twitter. That's at Big O Show. Speaking of Twitter, we had a poll question yesterday on Twitter. What are your thoughts on TMZ breaking the Kobe Bryant story before the family was told? 72% of you say it's wrong, 28% said it's their job, no problem. So three-quarters of you did not like it. But let me tell you something. Here's where it's kind of um, a thing that you got to accept. Listen, if you want to be famous, that comes with it, man. And people that are searching for fame, whether you want to be an actor, whether you want to be a politician... You want to be a musician or you want to be a athlete. You 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 want to send out a tweet, right? And then you want hundreds and thousands of people to retweet it, right? That's part of being famous. You're at a restaurant and people are taking pictures. That happens. You're at a red carpet and there are a slew of people taking pictures and they want to see you. This is the way it is, and they're buying magazines to find out about what you eat and who you're hanging out with and what your favorite music is and whatever. This is part of, of fame. And they're gonna, they are gonna they want to know when you go to the bathroom what you eat, who you're dressing, what you're dressing, you know, what, what you have on, what suit, who you're going out with, and when you die. It, it, it's just part of it. If you don't want to be, if you want privacy, then don't be famous. But if you're searching for fame, there are things that you are now saying, okay, I'm willing to give this up. And privacy is one of them. That's just the way it is. Whether you think it's right or it's wrong, the bottom line, it's reality. The reality is, this is how we play this game, man. And, it, uh, you know, I was talking about this on Mobile today because obviously I've been doing a, uh, a, a segment with the folks in Mobile for 20 years since I've been going there. And, um, and this started with John F. Kennedy, man. When he got shot in front of our eyes and we wanted to find out more and more information about it, This is the way it is. This is the wave of electronic media now. And now we find out about something that happens halfway around the world. We knew about everything going on in Australia right on our phones. And we know about the tragedy in Australia because of electronic media. So this is just part of it. It, it. It sucks for Kobe. It sucks for Vanessa that she had to find out that her husband died through TMZ. But the benefits of being famous probably outweigh the negatives because you're benefiting from them in all kinds of ways that end up in your pocket, in your bank account. So this is the part that is a negative. So be it. It's the price you have to pay to be famous. So don't be a politician then. Don't be the actor. Don't be the actress. Don't be the rock star. If you're looking for... It's like that commercial, that guy that he has that crowd running after him and he throws the shoe and they all are killing themselves for the shoe and then he he tries to hide in the bar. But then while he's drinking, he looks over at the window and they're all waiting for him again to leave the bar. That's just, a, man, you want you want to be famous, right? You want to be the famous tennis player, the rock star? You want to be the famous athlete? You want to be the famous soccer star? This is, this is kind of that, this is what comes with the territory. And uh, whether you think TMZ is right or wrong, they're doing a job that everybody else is doing. And if TMZ didn't break it, ABC was going to get it.
And if ABC didn't get it, then it was going to be Variety. And if Variety didn't get it, it was going to be E. But somebody was going to get it. And somebody was going to post it. TMZ just happens to be first at it. That's all. But, you know, I, I don't think it's a right or wrong now. I just think it's our society. It's what we've developed. And as long as actors want to put all their lives out there, like they have for 50-plus years, and, and they do more of it now than ever on social media, you, you're, you're welcoming the world into your world. You never find out about Neil Peart until he passed away and days after because that's how Neil Peart was the entire time. You really didn't find out much about Tiger because Tiger stayed secluded. So you're going to either, if you if you are not willing to be a hermit crab, then I'm sorry, you're going to be out in the public's eye. So that's where that poll question, you know, I get the people that say it's wrong, but that's just not reality anymore. And that's what's changed. Big O about subscription counts. YouTube abbreviates subscription counts everywhere except in a creator's private studio dashboard. Your subscribers will always will always see only three digits. For example, 1.0. Ah, okay. I see. All right. Uh, every QB coming out of college is not guaranteed success. It's a crapshoot. Yes, it is. You're right about that. It was wrong, but as a media outlet, it's their job to report the news as it's breaking. I don't think the news world have been taken well anyway. It was given to the families. Uh, I don't know. I mean, either way, just if she found out by, by TMZ or she found out by authorities, the sad part is this is the world that she lives in because of Kobe. You know, and it's not right or wrong. It's just what we're in now. And like I said, you, you, if you want privacy, don't become famous then. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just uh, privacy and, and uh, fame don't go hand in hand. 786-322-1105. That's 786-322-1105. If you want to get in on the program, better yet, you want to come on by, we are out here, man, at VSS West Pines, 12397 Pembroke Road. Come on out here, man. Go to the website, vsswestpines.com. If you're here by 3, you can come on by and say hi. would love to meet you. But if you, you can't come by, then come out here and see Jason and Alex and Tommy and Jose and Sasha, all the great people out here at VSS West Pines. They will take care of you, man. Got people coming in with heat gear, with Kobe gear today. You know, talking about the news and then, you know, talking about, uh, you know, just, uh, hey, he's he passed away. It's not as bad as, like, the paparazzi following Princess Diana down that tunnel and right. stuff. And it, it, there is, it's not to that extreme, let's say. They're no, not, they're no, not, no, it's not. But they're not digging through their trash. You know, the excessive, those people. Well, not yet, at least. But we haven't right. seen that yet. But They're yeah, just no, reporting I, I news. It is news. Yeah, but And I, if I, you I, don't, like you pointed out, somebody else is. You know, no, I, right. And that's, that's, that's a fact. But I think the part that bothers people is if they find out that Vanessa found out that way. And not somebody from the authorities to call in and and call her and say there is an you know, element. Mrs. Brian, we want yeah. we want to inform you that there's been a helicopter crash, and that your husband and your daughter did not survive. And maybe she gets that instead of because think about it. If she didn't see the report, others did, and now they're texting her saying, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I just heard the news." And then she hadn't heard the news yet. So then other people are telling her about two of the people that she loves most in the world are dead. Ugh. Think about it. So that's the part that enrages people. But unfortunately, 
the world that we're in and the world that Kobe chose to be in has allowed this already. This has kind of been part of it. And, and that's why. And that's why I told you, like, dating back to John F.K., you know, media started digging in on that right from the get-go. And why? Because we've had that, that, that power of electronic media where we can get information quickly. Phone, telephone, I mean, phone, TV, radio, satellite, you name it, we have access. And it's here. We all find out about everything at any time. You guys can download our show anytime. This is why this kind of format is growing and live radio is dying. Because you all out there are not watching live TV and live radio nearly as much anymore. You you listen to radio on your time. You download on your demand. Because you don't get a lot of commercials. You get straight talk. You don't have to wait for an eight-minute break. You're getting a sports update you really don't need anymore because you got your sports update here. You want your traffic? You got your ways here. You know? You don't have to wear a watch. Yeah. You know? It's just crazy. It's just uh, there's a lot of things they're doing that just waste your time, and you know it already. So you don't see it. That's why you get home and – Outside of a sporting event and news, a lot of people aren't watching live shows anymore. You'll go watch them after you DVR'd them, or if you still have a DVR, those you're eliminating that too. Now you're just going to, you know, Hulu and Amazon Prime and Netflix to watch your shows and binge. So it's a different world, man. And as it evolves and as it changes. You all are adjusting. I, I would, you know, I'm blessed, you know, because Bill and I would not be able to do this five, ten years ago. There's no way I could survive with this. But now, the radio signal is not important anymore. People have smart cars and smartphones, and if your car is not a smart car that you can have apps and listen to it all, then you have an auxiliary connection. That you then connect your phone and you can listen to our show. I mean, I see our numbers. They spike in morning and afternoon drive. I mean, just it, the the downloads, like 70% increase in the morning and afternoons. Because you guys are, are listening to us on your way to work or on your way home. It's really, really cool. And that's because a lot of people can listen to us now in the car. There are people listening to us right now live in the car. But hey, by the way, give me a little time here. We're going to we're going to get the listen live very soon. Very soon you're going to have a listen live button. You know what's great? Very Working soon. and getting paid. You know? <laughs> well, that that helps to that helps it that, that really helps does to help an, pay the bills. That really helps to have an employer that pays the bills. Yes. Yes. Oh, that uh, that always helps. Yeah, it's no fun to work for somebody that, uh, you know, thinks you can work for free or something, you know. Yeah, we got those kind of uh, scumbags in this world. Uh, Chris Ryle says, I love VSS West Pines. Thank you for going live from the shop. We love. There you go. There you go. We've Chris. actually had a blast today, man. Yeah, well. I'm... From the minute I got here. Of course. I got out with Alex and Jose. Of course. Been a good day. I was uh that was the that was expected, man. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's impossible not to have fun out here. You got great music going on, great people here. These guys are the easiest to get along with. Uh you you, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. And you can't beat a, an R two D two pipe. I mean, come on. Yeah, you can. Darth right. Vader up there. Oh yeah, the Darth okay. Vader one. Yeah, but Darth that... Vader up there yeah. will beat R two D two. I'm sorry. I do have a big giant Darth Vader uh, pipe here. But I listen. The good thing is when you get these kind of pipes, you know the force is with you. I mean, that's you know you got force, you got CBD, you're you're set. It's a beautiful thing. 
And and it does one CBD does wonders for pain. My wife is like, she's loving it. Okay, she's got this balm. What's that balm you guys gave me? That gold and copper one, in that little box. What's it called? Healthy, help friendly. What? You show it to me so I can show it to them, because if you want to buy a balm that works on pain my my wife has this back pain that she it's a shoulder pain i'm sorry that she's had for like a month and a half this is it this is the one this is what this is what another another um okay scented okay so this one's unscented the one i got from my wife and it's called the helping friendly salva see it there buy this okay this one's scented it's orange there you see it this one my wife puts on every single night. It doesn't stain your clothes. It doesn't smell. So just in case you're worried about that kind of stuff, your clothes will be fine. So it's really, really cool. And it's all natural, man. It's CBD. And, and it goes right into the pores. It gets into that muscle. My, my wife all of a sudden has way more flexibility. Again, you can get it here at VSS West Pines. The Helping Friendly Salva, right there. That's the unscented one. That's the one my wife gets. This one is the uh, the orange one. Okay, I don't know how I don't know how that one. I know this one because I see it with my wife, and she. Uh, I'm telling you, it helps her back pain in a big time way. So CBD is something you definitely want to look out. Carrie forty two says my favorite place to be. Well, come on out. How can you not love this place? Great place. Look at the music, all kinds of different things to buy. I'm telling you, you're going to uh, you're going to love it. Get in the flower zone. All kinds of different stuff to use, use to yes. make you happy. Yes, very happy. That's the good thing. You walk out of here happy. Right. You know? That's the beauty. You're going to definitely walk out of here happy. VSS West Pines. The happy place to be. You know, that's uh, I like that. The happy place to be where you get your CBD. You know? All right, let's take a quick break. Manny Navarro. I think he likes CBD also. Uh, it is time for our Canes Wear Miami Hurricanes report. We do it every week at this time. Time to talk a little Canes football. We do it in a couple of minutes with Manny Navarro from The Athletic next.